morning. Morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm going to get started here. Uh, I'm going to try to always start on time. I was actually late the first period because I had people blowing up the remind um, with me. Uh, anyhow, uh, good morning. I, congratulations on making it through the first day. Um, I know that was a tremendous feat in itself. I don't think I finished working last night until 1130. Um, so um, I do want to go over the teacher exam. So if you can take that out and um, I think we actually finished taking the teacher quiz, but we didn't finish going through the answers. So um, can somebody tell me where we stopped with the answers? Hello, I need someone to help me, please. Where did I stop? We stopped at seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay, I showed you where I got my bachelor's degree, right? UC Riverside? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And all of you to show me your face. Um, I am taking a 10, well, if you notice the attendance, uh, attendance was in Google Classroom. And um, I'm, I'm going to give you five minutes before class to take the attendance. Um, and if you notice, it ends, it's due at 1210, which is at the end of class. So what I need you to do, I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to go to Google Classroom right now, open a tab and go to Google Classroom and mark yourself present because the attendance will close at the end of class at 1210. So once again, I need to see your faces. Um, otherwise, I can't mark you present. Also, I need you to go to attendance in Google Classroom and mark yourself present for today. Uh, from now to the end of class to mark yourself present. The best thing to do with to, um, the next time I meet with you is just go five minutes before and mark yourself present. Hi, everybody. All right, let's let's finish with the teacher quiz. So I got my bachelor's of science at UC Riverside. Okay, who's my favorite rapper? Who's the who's the who's the best rapper of all time, guys? On your list. <laughs> nope. Go ahead, shout it out, everybody. There are no wrong answers here. Who do you think it is? Come on, you can do it. Let's get a few more guesses. Don't be afraid to unmute yourself. You guys are gonna be shy. You guys see this? All right, listen, I need you to participate because I'm just talking to a blank screen. So I really need you guys this opportunity to talk. So just unmute yourself and there are no wrong answers. So if you can participate, that'll help me get to know you. Um, so if you can join in with this, that would be great. All right, how many animals do I have? Go ahead, how many animals do you think I have? Three. No, nope, I don't have three. Other guesses? No. Two? Is it higher or lower? It's two. Oh. Can you guys see these? 
So I have two animals. This is Storm. And this is Remedy. And the funny thing is I don't even like cats. I'm a dog person. So I have these two cats that run my life. And it's all a very interesting situation over here. All right. In what sport was I an All-American? What do you guys think? Badminton? No, but I, I went to CIF in badminton. One more guess. Anybody? Softball. Oh, good hands. <laughs> hey, I almost, I almost just crushed my laptop with that, but I, but I caught it if you saw me fumble that. Yeah, softball, I was an All-American. In high school, what instrument did I play in the band? Go ahead, somebody. Hello. Uh, trumpet. Nope. Clarinet. Clarinet. Yep, I played the clarinet. All right. What was my major in college? Go ahead. I'm a math teacher. Take a guess. Science. No, close though. Anybody else? Mary? Close. I was a computer science major. So I have my bachelor's degree in computer science. I don't know anything about technology. You would have really seen it in first period. I was messing up all over the place, but they were being gracious to me. So you'll notice I'm technologically incompetent because I I don't know anything since I've been teaching for 30 years, but I actually have a computer degree. I did work in industry for five years. I was a subcontractor for the Army, Navy, and Air Force. So I was a formal verification analyst before I started teaching. So I did work in industry for a computer security company before I started teaching. All right. What color is the tile of my bathroom downstairs? Blue. Nope, close. Yellow. Nope. You see that? It's black, and if you can look at it real close, it's got an elephant skin to it. Ms. Birch, I can't see you. You can't? Mm -mm. Hmm. Can everybody else see me? I can see you. Thumbs up, please. Can everybody else see me? Okay, babe, you want to check your, did you join from Google uh, yeah. Classroom? Uh, join from your browser at the bottom? Yeah, I did that. Were you able to see me yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I was able to see you, but right now- Okay, there's something going on. Uh, Right now it's like a, like a loading circle. I can't see yeah, there's something going on with your video. So if it continues, you might want to get out and try to get back in. And then um, if not, you can watch the, I'm making a recording, you can watch the video later. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, while, while we're talking, I have a couple of announcements. So remember me. Um, Ricardo, can you mute yourself? Thank you. All right, I have a couple of announcements. First of all, don't forget to do the attendance from now to the end of the period. Also, um, have any of you picked up the codes at the high school for the online class? Okay, don't forget to do that because if I give an exam and you don't have the online code, you're not going to be able to take an exam. So you need to get the online code at school. Um, I sent out a schedule like this in the email to pick it up at the Rancho bus stop. You can pick it up anytime. Also, the calculator, this is it. It's the TI-83. So it's a highly powerful calculator with graphing capability. You need it. Otherwise, this class is going to be frustrating to you. So you have to have those two things. You have to have the class code for the online book. 
and materials, and you have to have a calculator. One more announcement. I'm getting bombarded by reminds and emails about people turning in stuff. Please, if I haven't taught it yet, don't ask me about it. Um, I had 40 emails at the end of yesterday. People are asking me all kinds of different things. Um, please stay with me. And I appreciate you guys trying to get ahead of the game, but please wait until I've explained things. Okay, and I'll explain it and assign it. So the verification letter, I haven't gone over it yet. The syllabus, I haven't gone over it yet. Um, the order of operation stuff in there, I haven't gone over it yet. So I put it in there because um, I want to make sure I got it in there, but I haven't assigned any of that yet. So um, I, I will be very organized and I'll assign everything. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna require you to do things without me talking about them. Okay. So stay, try to stay on the same page because I have 200 students taking me different directions. And I was up to 1130 last night trying to give responses. So I, I just can't function. I need some time for myself. Um, I shouldn't have to work from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. So um, please just wait until I explain things, stay attentive and follow directions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, ready? Back to some fun. Who are my two favorite pop stars? Let's start with the female first. So who's my favorite female pop star? Go ahead. What do you have? Rihanna. Rihanna. Can't hear it. Okay, I need you to mute yourself and talk clearly. So, uh, I don't know, Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> nope. One more guess. Who's my favorite pop star? Beyonce. Good guess. You guys, ready for this unveiling? Yeah. Okay, ready? Who is it? Hello, hello, who is it? Hello. It was Lady Gaga. Oh, it was Lady Gaga. Okay, who wants to guess my favorite male pop star? Jay Z. Nope. One more guess. Uh. Starts with a B. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. Good job. All right. Next question. Where did I earn my master's degree? UC Riverside. Good guess. That's where I got my bachelor's. Oh. This is where I got my master's. You ready? Azusa Pacific <laughs> University. And I think I'm just doing this to waste time so they can balance the schedules. No, we're not. Um, Ricardo, can you mute yourself? Thank you. The reason why we're doing this is because I'm giving you the opportunity to get to know me because um, I am, I don't know if you've heard rumors about me. I'm a pretty strict math teacher. So I run a really tight ship. And um, the reason why we're doing this is so that you can see me as a human being. And before I get into this really crazy mode of being a math teacher. So um, I think it's important for you to get to know me so that you feel comfortable with me. And I'm going to give, I'm going to, you're going to have the opportunity to let me know who you are also. So that that's why we're doing this. There is a purpose for it. Um, a lot of my friends don't even know this much about me. 
And so um, I, I want you to see me as a human being and not the crazy, crazy math teacher that you're gonna see coming up. All right, number 16, what do you think the pattern theme is in my house? Please participate. I'm just looking. Anticipate that would be a theme in my house. I see that. Leopard or cheetah. I even have a bathroom that has wallpaper that looks like a leopard. Okay, number 17. If you look at me closely, you could probably figure out what is my favorite accessory. Uh, jewelry. Yes. Jewelry. So I do wear a lot of jewelry. I, I do sleep with it every night, so I never take it off. So you'll always see me with it on because I never take it off. All right, number 18. Ready? Who is my favorite basketball player of all time? LeBron James. Nope, it's not LeBron. Kobe. Nope. Ready? Michael Jordan. Thank you. It is Jordan. I had a dream about him once. If you were, if you tell, if you remind me, I'll tell you sometime about it. It was great. It was really stupid, but I really remember it. And it was, it was like a great dream. So yeah, Michael Jordan. All right. Where do you think I got my math credential? Lots of degrees here. Bachelor's degree, master's degree. Now I'm asking, where did I get my math credential? Cal State University, San Bernardino. Moving on. Christianity. Yep. See that? Good guess. 21. What is my favorite NFL team? The Rams. No, not the Rams. They have a the beautiful Chargers. stadium, though. I flew the in Raiders. from Hawaii this last summer and it's a beautiful, beautiful stadium for the Rams. Go ahead. Who else? Go ahead. Who else? It's not the Rams. The Raiders. No, not the Raiders. The Giants. You guys see that? I know they suck right now, but I've, I've been a faithful Steeler fan for a long, long time. All right. In high school, I was MVP of what sport? Volleyball. Baseball? Volleyball. Good job. Whoever said that, good job. So, yes, I did play volleyball and softball. I actually played both of I played volleyball and softball in college. So um, I was actually recruited for volleyball, but um, I, I'm really a softball player. I played since softball since I was seven. Okay, you ready? What are my two favorite Broadway musicals? Anybody want to guess? Nobody wants to guess on this one? You guys see that? Oh, moving on. Oh. Why is that not moving? Wicked and Phantom of the Opera. Uh, 
All right, number 24, what is my favorite Major League Baseball team? The Angels. No, I do like tra Trout, though. Dodgers. <laughs> no, not the Dodgers. The Yankees. No, I hate the Yankees, but I do like Derek Jeter. So when Derek like Jeter plays the Angels. Yeah. No, she's an Astro fan. Cubs. No, but I gotta tell, no, but I gotta tell you something about the Astros. All right. You know when the Astros won the World Series? Yeah. Do you know that the first base coach was from Colton High School? For real? So when the Astros won the World Series, the first base coach was Richard Dower. And you may have seen that name in the Colton in the Hubs gym, Richard Dower. He was the first base coach for the Houston Astros when they won the World Series. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, he's a cheater too then. Yeah. All right, number 20. Oh, oh, I didn't tell you. My favorite baseball team is the Pirates. The so Pirates. I like the Pirates. All right, number 25. What did my father do for a living? I told you he didn't go to college, but what do you think my father did for a living? Construction. Good guess. That's my brother-in-law. No, he didn't do construction. Any other guesses? Carpenter. Carpenter. What was the other one? Uh... Landscaper. Nope. Good guesses, though. All right. My my father worked for Kaiser Steel in Fontana. Mm. And it's no longer there. Um, I think the Speedway is there now, but it was a, it was a big steel company. And um, he worked for Kaiser Steel. And um, I actually think that's where he contracted pancreatic cancer in that environment because they didn't have a lot of uh, the safety things they have now. And so um, my dad did have cancer and he passed away when I was nine. And I think this is very important for you to know because uh, my mother never remarried and my, my mother didn't work. So um, I didn't have a letterman's jacket. So you, you saw I was, I was all league in volleyball and softball. I was MVP of the league in volleyball. Um, I never had a letterman's jacket. I never had a class ring. I never had a swimsuit. I never, I had one pair of shoes. I had one pair of pants. And I think it's important for you to know that, that I'm not some rich white girl talking to you. Um, I am from Colton. I am in a, I was in a situation that a lot of you are. And I'm living proof that you can conquer your situation. The thing is, though, is you saw all my degrees and everything. It was a lot of hard work and sacrifice. So nothing was ever given to me. I had to work really hard at everything. And so I want you to know that you can be successful at whatever you set your heart to. Okay? Um, some of you don't believe right now that you can do math, and you can do math, and I'm going to prove it to you if you keep an open mind. Um, but you can, don't let anyone ever tell you you can't. Okay? So now I have two cars of my choice. I have a house, I have a lot of clothes, and uh, my life is completely different than what it was growing up in Colton as a kid. Um, and I want you to know I'm living proof and I'm an example that you can be successful at whatever you set your heart to and whatever you want, you can achieve. Okay, I think that's very important for you to know. I'm also gonna be showing you a motivational video today that. I'm gonna take time out of class to do it. So it's pretty important message that I want you to get. Um, so I will not be able to teach you math unless you actually believe you can do it. So if you, if you don't believe in yourself, um, if you don't open up your mind and heart, I won't be able to teach you. So I, I have to try to convince you um, that you can learn anything you wanna learn um, having an open mind. Okay, so that's it with that. Anybody want to ask me any questions about me? Okay, here we go. In Google Classroom, you may have seen this fish. 
The theme goes with my treasure chest of stuff that I showed you and the school of fish. So we're in school and you're my little fishes. What I'd like you to do is I put your nickname or your name across the belly. You can use markers, crayons, paint, uh, stickers, pictures, whatever you want to do to describe yourself. So I want you to describe yourself in this fish. And we get back to school, I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to put them all across the whiteboards. And you're going to see all the different fish and you're going to see how all of your uniqueness is what makes a beautiful, beautiful classroom. And without you, um, we the world wouldn't be as good. So it's really super cool to see these all up in the classroom. And um, it's important for you to embrace your uniqueness. So you don't have to be artistic. You don't have to do anything. Just have fun with this and decorate this up with your name on it and um, tell me about yourself. And then I want you to submit this to me um, so I can learn more about you since you know a little bit about me now. All right, what I'd like to do right now is I'm not gonna go through the whole syllabus and bore you to death, but I'm gonna talk about some important things and then we're gonna watch a video. All right. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Hopefully this will go away. Thank you. All right. This is this pre-calculus distance learning syllabus. It is in classroom. Um, if you look at period two, it shows you when you're coming to class on Mondays and when Thursdays. And on Wednesdays, you're coming at 1020. There's my office hours. There's my email, the Remind app you have. I want to go down, you can read all that yourself, to the meeting expectations. Now, a lot of teachers have gone through this with you already, and you're already aware of what's going on, but um, let me go through this. Um, make sure that you get on early in case you have trouble. Um, you want to make sure that you're ready to go and start on time. If possible, I want you to use headphones or AirPods or anything that you have to minimize instruct direction distractions. Last spring, students were complaining that people were walking around in their house and they couldn't study and people were distracting them. So try to find a place where you can actually act like you're in the classroom and um, if possible. I know that for some of you that's hard to do. Um, if I can help out in any way, let me know if I need to speak to your parents or anything to, to just cool it down there at the house so you can concentrate and study, let me know. Okay, sit close and show your face. I'm um, in most of the screens. Um, you are not allowed now to not show your face um, because we are taking attendance and holding you accountable this way. So you can't just, you know, um, join the meeting and then take off and play Xbox. You already know how to do this. Mute yourself. Don't forget to uh, mute yourself uh, when you want to talk. Though, you guys, you're being muted to eliminate uh, static. You are not being muted, muted to be quiet. So I want you to share. I want you to speak up. If I'm doing, if I make a mistake or I'm doing a wrong problem, just say, unmute yourself. Ms. Birch, you're doing the wrong problem. Or is that even right? Or I didn't get that. Um, I do want you to talk. You are not being muted to be silent. You're muted to eliminate static. So like I said, participate by asking questions and commenting. The more you talk, the better off we're gonna be. So the more we all talk, the better off we're gonna be. We can all <clears throat> clear things up, answer questions and be on the same page. Um, when I ask you a question, either nod your head or give a thumbs up, that really helps me. Um, remember that I'm talking to a screen and I'm by myself. So any help you can give me would be greatly appreciated. Uh, make sure you have materials. I'm going to go over materials today and what you need to have. So make sure you have a work area. Take notes all the time. I'm not going to say take notes. Make sure you take notes. Um, you're going to be using these notes in the future for future math classes in junior college or four year college. So you're going to, these notes are going to be important to you. Uh, make sure you dress appropriately. 
refrain from eating. You do want to act like you are in class. Um, so make it as professional as possible. Clean the area, like I said, silence your phone, only check texts um, and or emails that pertain to the class. So don't be texting your girlfriend, boyfriend. Um, just make sure that whatever you're doing pertains to the class. Okay. Okay, here are the materials. You're gonna need notebook paper, so have it around. Um, I only accept things in pencil, so you cannot do your notes and you cannot do um, assignments in pen. They must be in pencil. Okay, I'm gonna go over the notebook extensively. If you guys can see the ring binder. So you can either have a five subject notebook or you can have a notebook for math. I'll just tell you that most of my students like to have a notebook only for math because there's a lot of papers. You must have this notebook. And I told my students that if you can't get a notebook, I'll give one to you. So let me say this. If you can't get a notebook, I'll drive one to your house. So you must have a notebook. The notebook is gonna count as a test grade. So it's gonna be an easy test grade, but you must have it. So three ring binder. Um, you need to have the graphing calculator, which you're going to pick up at the bus stop. And you're going to use highlighters and colored pens if you want to annotate your, your notes or assignments. But everything has to be done in pencil. Um, if we were at school and I was actually seeing your papers, I, I don't even collect things in pen. So basically you get a zero if you do things in pen. So start getting good habits. I'm trying to train you right now, so please listen to me and follow directions. Um, I need everything done in pencil. Okay, a few more things and I'll watch a video. Student expectations, you are to complete assignments by the due date. Um, there were five people yesterday that didn't turn in their attendance on time. Uh, just know that if you don't turn things in on time, you're going to get a zero. I'm not taking late work. Now, if there's an extenuating circumstance, God forbid you get in an accident or somebody has to go to the hospital, um, all you have to do is, is talk to me about it. Um, but in norm normally, you have to turn in things by the due date. I'm not, I don't accept late work. Um, I used to, but I realized that I was enabling students to fail, so no more late work. Um, regular, regularly communicate with the teacher and other students. Um, engage in all discussions. Um, make sure that you regularly check Google Classroom and email for things that are going on. Um, for other, sometimes I'll send things through Remind, but important exam announcements or something I will put in the Google Stream. Be professional and respectful with everybody. Be honest and responsible, and be committed to be successful. Now, notice that doesn't say be smart. It says just be committed. Um, so I can teach you math if you have an open mind. Um, don't worry about that. I, I can teach you. Yes, Ms. Birch, but I've never understood my entire math my entire life. Well, time to change things. Okay, my teacher expectations, I'm going to provide complete and well-organized materials. I'm going to encourage you to question things and communicate. I'm going to maintain workshops or just where we study together and where you ask for help and office hours. Um, you do need to know this. I do not keep I, I, I collect assignments on classroom, but I don't do grades on classroom. So don't pay attention to the grades on classroom. I put all grades on Zangle. So let me say that again. I collect assignments and things on in classroom, but all the grades go to Zangle. Okay, be, I'll be professional and respectful with you. I'm almost done. Um, I think I'm going to stop there. Hold on just a second. Yeah, I'm going to stop there. All right, let's watch a video. Now, this video is not to suck up time. Um, this is a very important video. I want you to pay close attention and I want you to get the message in this video. Okay, this is a very important message and I wouldn't show it if it wasn't important. All right, let me show my screen. I am sharing it. Let me open up this. 
Hopefully I won't mess it up like I did last period. Bear with Make sure I get the right one. All right, you guys ready?
you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. To get something you never had, you have to do something. Thank you. 
going to start up again. Hold on a minute. Sorry. Let's see if I can get back in the meeting here. You guys there? Okay. Are you guys there? Can you see me? All right, so basically our society, our society has said that failing is a bad thing. And I'm here to tell you that failing is not a bad thing. And um, I need you to get that out of your head. It's been ingrained in your head. I can't fail, it's a bad thing. I can't fail, I'm stupid. I can't fail, I won't be able to do this. I can't fail, I won't be able to do that. That is a lie in your mind, and you can thank society for putting that in your mind. So we fail to succeed. Okay, even Michael Jordan said, you know, I missed um, 10,000 free throws. I missed up teen hundred game-winning shots, and guess what? I'm one of the best basketball players that ever played the game. So you have to fail to succeed. So I don't want you to be afraid with me. I want you to be bold. I want you to communicate with me. And when I ask you to do problems, I want you to do them. And because we welcome mistakes, because through our mistakes, is that's what's going to make us better. We fail to succeed. So that, that's the kind of mentality we have to have. It's very important that you have this mentality because right now, I don't know where you're at, but I'm guessing you probably hate math, some of you. And some of you don't believe that you've ever been able to do it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that you're going to be able to do it if you just keep an open mind. You have to believe in yourself, though. Because if you, if you don't believe you can, you won't. I used to coach softball at Cal State San Bernardino. I coached there for 10 years while I was teaching at, at Colton High. If one of my players stepped in the batter's box and they, I gave them a signal and they didn't know what they were doing, I immediately substituted for them. Because if they doubt, they will not get a hit. So you, you've got to be confident in yourself and you have to know that failure is not a description of your intelligence. Okay, I'll say that again. Your failure does not describe your intelligence. Okay, so all of you can do it. Okay, all of you, I'm not kidding, you can. Um, so just try not to tell yourself that you can't. Okay, so you can, you will, and I'm gonna teach you math and you may be learning it for the first time. Okay, all right. What I wanna do now is, I'm not gonna go back to the syllabus right now. I do wanna talk about the notebook and the assignments, okay? So let me show you the notebook here. So this is my pet, this is Storm right here. This is his notebook. And this page is in Google Classroom for you to use. Um, it is the title page. And if you notice down here at the bottom, you're gonna put your name, date, period, and Miss Birch. Notice that Storm put pictures of his friends. So he has a picture of Remedy over here, and this is Banshee up here. So notice that it's decorated. Now here's the deal. There's gonna be a point when you hate my guts, okay? Um, and there's gonna be a point when you're really frustrated with math. And I want this notebook to be a positive thing for you. So I want it all decorated. I want you to color it. I want you to put stickers. I want you to pick pictures of your girlfriend. I want to pick, put you, I want you to put pictures of your boyfriend. Anything that makes you happy, put it on in your notebook. Okay? Because when you hate me and when you hate math, I want you to pick up your notebook and go, oh, there's my buddies. There's my friends. Um, and I all of a sudden don't feel so bad. So let me show you, this is a three ring binder. You can either have a five subject notebook or a notebook for math. My students usually like a separate notebook for math because there's a lot of papers. Um, like I said, if you can't get one of these, let me know and I'll drive one to your house. This is the assignment sheet. Uh, this is in Google Classroom under materials. 
So this is for you to keep track of stuff. <coughs> I do want you to keep track of your assignments on this um, because you being organized is gonna help you learn math. There are three section dividers. So the three section dividers are notes, assignments, and handouts. So notice that Storm put a bunch of stickers in here of his buddies. He also loves Cinderella. So he has pictures of her in there. And last but not least, he likes to look out the window at butterflies. So he decorated up his notebook pretty good. This is a handout multiplication table. So this is all you need in your notebook to like save your life and being organized, okay? And I wanna go over it right now. So what I wanna do is share my screen. You do have these pages in Google Classroom. Bear with me. All right, so we're not gonna do assignments right now. I'm gonna talk about the notebook. All right, you're gonna keep a math notebook with all of your notes, graded assignments and handouts. It's gonna be checked randomly. Um, when you're at school, I will pick them up and give them back, back in the same period. Um, notice that you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna count as a test grade. So this shows you the importance of the notebook. It's gonna count as a test grade when I check it. So if you wanna write this down on a sheet of paper, or if you printed this out or whatever you're doing, if you, if you can fill this in right now or write it on a sheet of paper, this is fill in the blanks. Okay, so if you wanna fill this in, this must be a three ring binder. It cannot be loose leaf. It has to be a three ring binder. Like I said, it could be a five subject notebook if you want. Your notebook has to have a title page, assignment sheet, and these are the dividers. The first one is notes, assignments, and handouts. So these three bullets are notes, assignments, and handouts. Now I'm just gonna repeat myself. There must be a title page, and I put that in Google Classroom. There must be an assignment sheet. You're logging assignments on it. Dividers must separate each section. Here are the sections, notes, taken clearly, assignments, and handouts. The material in each section must be ranged in order, and it's chronological order. Don't worry about the spelling. It's C-H-R-O-N. I L O G I C A L chronological order by date. Keep your notebook orderly. Neatness and creativity. So coloring it, putting pictures in it, glitter, um, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to put in there, pictures of cars, um, whatever you want to put, um, fix up your notebook so you feel happy about it. And this is how I grade the notebook. All right, does anybody have any questions about the notebook? Questions about the notebook? <clears throat> what was after assignments? Um, it's the dividers are notes, assignments, and handouts. So whenever I pass out handouts, like maybe a formula sheet or um, like answers documents or anything, anything that you um, that's a handout, it's not an assignment you could put in the handout section. So in this notebook that I had here, this is a big multiplication table. So you could put your syllabus in there, um, or you can put you know any handouts that I give you, put them in the handout section. Okay, does anybody need to see the notebook again? Okay, the title page, you can go in here if you want. Assignment sheet, this is all in Google Classroom. The dividers 
our notes, assignments, and handouts. That's it. So you put these notes in the notes section, assignments in the assignment section, and handouts in the handout section. All right. Can you guys see me? You, do you guys see me as a little person, or do you, am I covering your screen? You're covering my screen. The current screen. You're all big. Okay, perfect. Okay. I want to talk about the assignments now. All right. Regular sheet of paper, right? You're going to fold it like a hot dog. All right, so here's the piece of paper. Fold it. So you open it like a book. On the top, not in the middle or the bottom, on the top, you're going to put your name, date, period, and assignment number. Let me show you. Here it is. Name, date, period, and assignment number. I'm going to be going over it again. So when you open up, pay attention. This is going to be one page. This is going to be two pages, three pages, and four. So it's like four pages. So I'll show you again. Hold, there's your paper. Close it. Name, date, period, assignment number. When you open it up, you're going to start problem number one right here. So you're going to open it up and you're going to start problem number one. You're going to work vertically and circle your answers. I'm going to go over all this. So let me show you this. You guys can see the big me, right? Okay, I'm going to show you a problem on the board. So if I were doing this problem, do we write that down? No, no, don't okay. write this down. Just pay attention to me. Thank you for asking though. Normally when I write, you should, but just pay attention. So let's say, so you're going to write down the original problem. I'm going to go over this. And if you were to solve this for y, you would subtract three x from both sides. By both sides by two. So this is how I'm going to want you to do your work. You should already be trained on how to do this, but there's a lot of teachers who have dropped the ball. And I'm sorry for that. But what you need to do is write the original problem. See how my equal signs are lined up? You have to write the original problem and work vertically. And circle your answer. I'll say it again. You're going to write the original problem. You're going to work vertically. Now, like I said, when you're done with this page right here, you're going to go to this page. When you're done with that, you go there. You might need extra sheets. But just remember, however many sheets you have on the outside when you fold it is always your name, date, period, assignment number. And when you put this in the notebook, you're going to open it up and put it in your notebook in, under the assignment section. Okay, now, you see how much time I have? I'm going to go, I'm going to go over this again now. So I'm going to share my screen and go to assignments again. I hope. All right, here we go. Do we have to Once turn again, the, that in? You're not going to turn this in. Mm -mm. I'm, just, I'm just explaining how to do the assignments.
So even though it's an assignment in Google Classroom, I'm just explaining to you how to do it. So you have to write this down somewhere. So if you have a printer, print it out. If you don't, or you use Cami, whatever you do, I want you to fill in the blanks. You're not turning it in though. All right, ready? Assignments are gonna be given a lot. <laughs> it's important to complete all assignments. Fair to do so will affect your grade severely. I am not gonna be accepting late assignments unless there's an extenuating circumstance. And what I mean by that is that you were at the hospital or you were throwing up or something like that. Um, you have to turn assignments in on time. Um, last spring, people were turning th pe people were turning in all kinds of late stuff and I'm a, you'll get a zero. So it causes me too much work and I'm trying to hold you accountable and I need you to turn in your work on time. So pay attention to deadlines. All right, assignments done in pencil only. Assignments done in pen. So you would fill in the blank there. If you don't have this in front of you, it's okay to just write one in front of pen so you can fill it in later. So I do not accept assignments in pen. This is the stuff I went over for the, for the assignment. It look, must look like a hot dog. And it should have your name, date, period, and assignment number. So name, date, period, and assignment number. Number three, the original problem must be written down for every problem on every assignment. So number three is the original problem must be written down for every problem on every assignment. All work showing how the problem was done must be written down like I showed you on the board. Problems are to be worked vertically. That means up and down. And all answers must be clearly circled. Now, I do recommend that you, you draw a line. So corrections are redone under a line. See, here's the deal. If you do, if I give you the answers and you did all the problems wrong, you're gonna have to make some corrections, otherwise you're gonna get them wrong on a test. So that's what the whole thing behind this is. When, when you're done with the assignment, draw a line and correct your work at the end so you know what it is you did wrong. Indicate corrections by writing the word corrections underneath the line. So in other words, if you're looking at me, Let's say I miss number one. You just draw a line at the end of the assignment. So let's say I only assigned one problem. If I assign 50 problems, it would be done at the end of 50 problems. And what you do is try to correct some or all of the problems that you miss so you can get them right on a test. Okay, extra, sign, extra credit, I don't give a lot. Um, just know that if you're absent, um, you have so many days to make it. If you're absent three days, you have three days to make it up. This really doesn't apply to distance learning. Um, you just need to communicate with me um, if there's some type of problem going on, if there's some kind of extenuating circumstance. Otherwise, um, you have to complete assignments when they're due. All right, do you guys want to ask me any questions about anything? All right, I want to do a problem with you then. We're still not doing any work right now. Um, I want to do a problem with you. Let me pin myself. I want you to write this down and I want you to do this problem. All right.
Ready? All right, I want you to write that on a sheet of paper and do this problem, please. Um, I can't see the equation. My screen is really blurry. Okay, can you see it if I move it up some? Are you using a Chromebook? No. What are you using? I'm using my, uh, my personal computer. Okay. Can you see it if I move it up? Babe, can you see it now? A little bit. It's a little bit better. Okay, I'm try moving it up. Can you just say the equation out loud? Yeah, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of this, though, so it's really important that we try to get this resolved. Um, if your personal computer isn't working, I need you to get a Chromebook. Okay, get a Chromebook so that you're, because I'm going to be writing a lot on the board. You're going to have to, I'll read it though. It's five minus two parenthesis, two minus three parenthesis to the third power, plus eight plus four divided by two parenthesis, seven minus a negative four and parenthesis. Now, when you're done, you guys, I want you to shout out your answers, please. And I don't, like I said, I don't care if you fail. So you could be right or wrong, I don't care. So give me some of your answers. I'm gonna write the answers over here. Okay, let's go. Do this problem and tell me what you get. Shout out your answers, please. I want to make a list of answers over here. I want everyone participating. Those of you who are not showing me your face, I need to see your face. You'll be marked absent. Um, I need everybody to shout out the answers, please. Andres, if you're there, I need to see you. Naomi, I need to see you, please. Naomi, if you're there, I need to see you, hon. Otherwise, I have to mark you. Yeah, my camera's not working. I tried. Okay. But, it, but you're there. But you're there. Okay. As, as, long, yeah, as long as I, I know you're there. Me. That's okay. As long as I know you're there. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Shout out your answers, please. I got, I got 37. 37? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, I'm still listening, everybody. Shout them out. Don't be afraid. I don't care if you're wrong. Everybody's gonna be wrong, so go ahead. I'm trying to make a point here, so go ahead and give me your answers, please. There's a lot of different answers. Still waiting, I need everybody's answers. Running out of time, guys. I need your answers, please. Please tell me your answers. What are you getting? There's gonna be 20 different answers. Please give me your answer. I got 32. 32? 
I got 37 as well. Okay, anybody else? 37. Okay, 37. anybody else? I also got 37. 37? Yeah. Same here, 37. Some different answers? I got 37. 32, 37, any others? I got 32. 32, okay, any others? Okay, last call. Anybody, usually I have like 20 different answers up here. Anybody else have an answer? Okay, well, let me explain something here. A lot of times students try to do this problem in their head and they don't show work. And um, you can't do this in your head. So it's physically impossible to do this in your head. So I'm just letting you know. Um, the brain can only handle so much information. So physically, you can't do it. So I'm just letting you know, you can't. I don't care, even if you're Albert Einstein, you can do it, number one. Number two, a lot of students think they know the order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but a lot of people don't. So they can say it, but I realized in my 30 years of teaching that students don't actually understand it and that's why they're getting all the wrong answers. All right, so pay attention to me, we're gonna work it together, okay? So first of all, Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's where teachers make a mistake when they write that because students don't understand it. So you see this right here? You do not do multiplication first. It's multiplication or division, whichever comes first. And then adding and subtracting is the same thing in algebra. So A plus a negative B is the same as A minus B. So adding and subtracting is the same thing in algebra. All right, so here we go. So according to the order of operations, we're gonna do parentheses first. So this would be five minus two, a positive and a negative depends on the bigger number and opposite subtract. Do not add anything. This ends up being seven plus four. And on the next step, we're still doing parentheses. A negative raised to an odd power is negative. And seven plus four is 11. Forgot my two. That's two times 11. So I'm done with the parentheses now. So we go to exponents. I already did the exponents. I should have done that there, but it's okay because it didn't affect the other part of the problem. But um, I did the exponent. And now we multiply or divide whichever we see first from left to right. So that does not mean do multiplication first. We're just going to go from left to right. So this is five, a negative times a negative is a positive. And you see this division right here? My rag go. Can you believe I just lost my rag? Just like disappeared. Here it is. So four divided by two is two times 11. So you may have made your mistake there. Five plus two plus eight plus 22. And now you can add or subtract or do whatever you want. This would be 37. Now, if you notice what I did here, I wrote the original problem. This is an expression. This is not an equation. I put an equal sign on the left and I let the problem filter down to 37. So 37 was the correct answer. And it is important that you follow the order of operations if you want to get the right answers. Now, couple things. I'm going to show you some stuff students get confused about.
What do you think this answer is right here? One. Right. A negative raised to an even power is, is um, positive. What do you think the answer is for this one? Nobody's answering. Negative one? It is. So let me just clear this up once and for all. This negative is not part of the power. In fact, what this really means, this means this. So that's what it means. So this negative is not affected by the power. This negative is. So that's a mistake that people make all the time. And guess what? People get all the wrong answers. Like, why do I keep getting the wrong answers? Why do I keep getting the wrong answers? Because this negative is affected by the power. This negative is not. So I just cleared up something major right now. If you already knew that, good. And good for your teachers. One more thing. You have a negative and a negative, and you have a negative and a negative. What's this answer? Is this, is this adding, subtracting, multiply, or dividing? Multiplying. Multiply. So what's a negative times a negative? Positive. What's this? Adding, subtracting. See, nobody's answering me. What is it? Subtracting. Yeah, and, and subtracting. subtracting is adding. So if you say add, fine, because negative 2 plus negative 3 is the same as that. Those are equivalent. So you, when you hear me refer to adding as subtracting, it's the same thing. Because there, I just proved it to you. A negative 2 and a negative 3 is the same as a negative 2 plus a negative 3. Negative three. It's the same thing. So now, what's this answer? Nobody's answering. Negative five. Negative five. Yeah. So one of the things you have to remember, and people mess up on this all the time, is a negative times a negative is a positive, but a negative and a negative is a negative and you add. So I'll say it again. A negative times a negative is a positive. Everybody gets that right all the time. It's this one everybody gets wrong. A negative and a negative is a negative and you add. All right, now, I have not assigned this and I didn't get this far in period one. So there's this little order of operation sheet in your assignment. If you wanna try to get started and try to do the assignments the way we talked about, Name, date, period, assignment number, and you're just going to put order of operations number one. You're going to start on the inside. You're going to use this to write. You, don't, you can't write on this. There's not enough room. Going to write down number one and work it in circle your answers. Write down number two, because eventually I'm going to have you do this, and we're going to check the answers to make sure you understand the order of operations, because I can't teach you pre-cal unless you understand this. So go ahead, don't be afraid of failing. Um, give this a shot and see how you do with it. And I will give you the answer to this sometime, but I haven't assigned it yet or anything. So if you wanna get a heads up on it. All right, that's it for today, guys. Um, it's almost 12.10, it's 12.09. And um, class time's over. And so I'm gonna stop the recording and I hope you guys have a great day. All right, and if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, please.